For some reason, the makers of the next Tomb Raider game have decided that Lara Croft needs to be under the threat of sexual assault. More specifically, the threat of being raped. I don't know why they felt that this was something that had to exist in the storyline for the game, but in the latest release of Tomb Raider, uh, Yitzhak Ben Mashi wondered, one wonders how many sick puppies will let it go and watch the rape happen. Now, the thing is, this Huffington Post article to which I'm actually referring to uh, was part of by uh, Alyssa Rosenberg who uh, exposes two guys that she knows who wanted to see that happen. I mean, we know that there are people out there who want to see rape. I mean, you can go to, I mean, a real one, even, even a simulated one in a video game. She goes to criticize these people and say about how, oh, is, is, is this what our society has, has gone to? And, you know, the, this and that, and the, the usual very superficial criticisms. To a degree, she's kind of ignoring the fact that video games are sexist. There's absolutely no question of that. I mean, you can take a look at just about any video game and find it. Uh, one of the things that people try to point to and say how it's not sexist is like Bayonetta. So, an ultra-attractive woman uh, with an unrealistic body type, uh, wearing stiletto heels, an overly sexualized character is somehow empowering, and all the, the complete fallacies that end up being bound up with that. It, they're forgetting that this, this rape culture, which we do have, and that is v very much true, we do have a rape culture, is stemming from male privilege. I mean, that's inherently what rape is. Uh, people say it's, it's to have power over people, it's an expression of that power, and there's some really, really ridiculous uh, pseudo-scientific explanations put up by a, a lot of uh, people on YouTube, which are insane. But it is inherently a sense of entitlement that that woman is there to be taken because you're entitled to it. And we should not be surprised when we see this extended into other realms, particularly video games. And video games are massively marketed towards young men. Eventually they'll figure it out how to market it to, to girls too because they will always want to inherently expand the market to have more consumers. But I mean, it's impossible to notice that video games are marketed towards young men teenagers, and boys. So should we not be surprised that a sexual element would be put into them? After all, sex is the easiest, the single easiest thing to sell, except for possibly violence. And violence in video games is also a very easy sell and was one of the main reasons why I liked video games was, uh, was the violence. But we should, should not be surprised that this would be so common in a capitalist society that rape would be used to sell something or something that would be genuinely wanted in any kind of form of entertainment. This is a self-gratification, capitalist, individualist society. So that's what we get. Something that has no concern for other people, but only self-gratification, even massively at the expense of other people. So there should be absolutely no question as to why this is here. However, a lot of the uh, social analysts don't seem to understand that because they won't inherently take a look at the system we have and that understanding that the social relations we have spring from the economic relations. And the economic relations say to hell with everybody else, I got to get mine, I'm number one, and everybody else means nothing. So should we, should we really be surprised that, some, that such social relations should spring from those kinds of economic relations.